Ezekiel chapter 14 with the word of wisdom from our Father in Jesus' name, verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me, not the elders of Judah, but of Israel, which had already gone into captivity 200 years before this writing. So these elders of Israel were from that captivity of the Assyrian, and the Assyrian was a type of Antichrist. So here are some of the elders of Israel sitting before Ezekiel, and the word of the Lord came unto Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart, in their mind, that is to say, and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? A stumbling block is an obstacle that causes you to fall, that obscures your vision from the truth of God's word. They were obsessed with idols, and so it is this day with where the ten tribes ended up in Europe as well as North America, as far as not leaving any room for God's truth, but the things of this world cloud your vision as a stumbling block that causes you to fall into iniquity and away from God's grace, away from God's blessings. And Deuteronomy 28 figures heavily into this. Because when you don't put God first, when you don't hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, you go into captivity eventually, as you can read up for yourself in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And here in this end generation, the entire world will go into the captivity of Babylon, of the end times, which means confusion, Satan being that king of Babylon, the king of confusion. And they would know that it was Satan if they would put their idols away and get into their father's word. Verse 4. Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, translate that word mind, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. They don't even know their heavenly Father anymore, and you can't know him unless you're familiar with his word. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. What's an abomination? It's a disgusting thing, a thing that's totally disgusting, repulsive, that is to say, to our Father. That's what an abomination is, and ultimately, Satan is that desolator who comes on the wings of abomination. All the idolatry that you see written of in our Father's Word are types and examples leading up to the sixth trumpet whenever they whore after the Antichrist. For every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, and to update this to our time, Christianity, those grafted in as well as the natural seed of the ten tribes, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And this happens at the seventh trumpet. They'll be cast into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, as Christ said, because it's at the seventh trumpet that they'll realize that they've been worshiping the devil. And if they weren't clouding up their minds now with everything but God's word, then they wouldn't have been deceived. So whose fault is it? And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. He allowed them to be deceived. They did it to themselves. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. The natural seed as well as those grafted in Christianity, that is to say, and that includes the tribe of Judah as well as Benjamin, the southern kingdom as well as far as this is concerned, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. In other words, the deceiver answers for the sins committed on account of his or her deception. So if someone teaches their congregation as a pastor, so-called the flyaway doctrine that we covered in the last chapter, and they cause the people to be deceived by Satan whenever he appears as the Antichrist, they're going to have to answer for that. 
that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, this is the reason, neither be polluted any more with their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. That's what our Father wants, is for his children to repent and turn to him. Don't you want your children to listen to you? So does God. You're his child. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, and trespassing grievously is from the Hebrew Strong's numbers 4603 and 4604, to treacherously cover up. Cover up what? The truth of God's word. You'll notice in Revelation 16, when it speaks of the first vile, a noisome and grievous sore falls on those with the mark of the beast, is from not being familiar with God's word and being neutralized by things like the rapture deception that was brought about in 1830, that most Christians will receive that mark of the beast at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial when Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem, and those who taught the rapture theory will answer for it. Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. And the famine of the end times is what? hearing the word of the Lord. We know that from Amos chapter 8. And again, God is allowing this. It's up to the individual. If you want to hearken unto the voice of your heavenly Father because you love him, then this doesn't apply to you. You'll receive his blessings, and you will stand in the evil day, as Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 6, with the gospel armor on and in place, allowing yourself to be delivered up, at which time the Holy Spirit will speak through you, because you're familiar enough with your Father's word to know that nobody's flying anywhere. That's Satan's deception, the any moment now doctrine. And if they believe that Christ will appear at any moment, guess what they're going to think whenever Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem? He's supernatural. They're going to think that it's Jesus, and then they're going to die spiritually. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. And the use of these three men here, Noah, Daniel, and Job, looks forward to the end as well, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be, as Christ said in Matthew chapter 24. And remember, the flood was because of the fallen angels, who will be cast out of heaven with Satan at the beginning of that five-month-long hour of temptation at the woe of the fifth trumpet. And the flood of lies will be on the earth at that time, and the waters were on the earth for 150 days, as you know from Genesis chapter 7 and the last verse, that's five months, 150 days in the solar, 140 days in the lunar. Then you have Daniel. Daniel spoke of the coming of that desolator who comes on the wings of abomination, as well as many other things that apply to the end, that final five-month period, the hour of temptation that must first transpire before anybody gathers back to Christ at all. And Job, which means persecuted. Some believe the events spoken of in the book of Job took place during a five-month-long period, and you even have types of these stages of the locust with Job's three friends up until Elihu steps in, which is symbolic of the consumer stage of the locust, and when Satan appears. That's the fourth and final stage of the locust army. All four stages take place during that five-month-long hour of temptation. Temptation. We have stages of the types of the locust army that are going on now and have been going on for quite some time, but the real McCoy doesn't happen until Satan and his angels are cast from heaven to the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet. Check it out and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it, whatever you do. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. They loved the Father. They were familiar as they could possibly be with the will of God. That's what it takes is love for your Father. And if you loved him, you'd want to know everything that he had to say, right? There you go. That's the key to everything right there. If I cause noisome beasts, there's that word noisome again. Remember Revelation 16, that noisome and grievous sore that falls on those with the mark of the beast in their forehead. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it, 
so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters through intercessory prayer. It won't work at that time, in other words. Only the individual can have that love for the Father emanate from within. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate because of the desolator who appears at the sixth trumpet. Jerusalem will be made desolate. Not one stone shall be left standing upon another, as Christ said in Matthew 24. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves, their souls, that is to say, all flesh will be done away with at the seventh trumpet. Or if I send a pestilence into the land, and pour out my fury upon it in blood, to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, How much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, and the famine, and the noisome beast, and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast. And those four horsemen of the apocalypse, symbolic of the four hidden dynasties, become totally spiritual whenever Satan appears as the false Christ. The sword was given to the rider of the red horse, the war horse, and it will be a spiritual war at that time, but a one world peace system, supposedly, but it's a fake peace. Satan comes in peacefully and prosperously, and by peace shall destroy many because it's not really peace there will not be peace on earth until the true prince of peace returns at the seventh trumpet and the famine the famine for hearing the word of the lord will be total at that time except for what's in the foreheads of god's elect and what god says through his elect whenever they're delivered up and the holy spirit speaks through them and the noisome beast there you have the first seal there not just satan himself but his children the kenites and the pestilence that's the fourth horse death which is one of satan's names and hell followed with him that has to do with those on the other side of the gulf in my opinion but we'll see the fourth and final stage of the locust army the consumer stage to cut off from it man and beast yet behold therein shall be left a remnant those with the seal of God in their forehead, those that love our Father enough to study his word, that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters, both sons and daughters shall prophesy, as it's written in the book of Joel. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. Because at the seventh trumpet, you'll understand why God had to do what he had to do in this flesh age. It'll all make sense at that moment. Much to the dismay of those that were deceived, they'll want the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them out of shame from him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, as it's written in Revelation chapter 6. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God.